between them before. Uh, I think the kind of weirdest pick here is like the Juliet Rasmus uh, sort of double forward comp there with double brawler. Um, but I think that might be more of like a midfield Rasmus type thing, unless we're going really wild and we're playing an Atlas forward. Um, but I think that is going to be like the least stock part of this. And even that is fairly stock. Uh, when it comes to Atlab, the teams kind of know what they want, know what they like, and they tend to stick to it. It tends to be pretty standard, pretty figured out here. Um, so, and of course, we have that classic Atlas versus Mako pick. Um, just some wall goalies to hold it down as much as possible uh, while your forwards do their thing. Yeah, look at these starting awakenings. We got pancakes all around. Even the greatest meme opting for the pancakes. Only Sovereign went for the size here. It's a very interesting choice to go for speed over size uh, on Rasmus start, I guess. Hoping to get the built diff for the rampage later on in the draft. Could be the angle there. Pummeler is, of course, on the guy that gets known for the uh, known for the uh, the Juliet, and of course, getting plenty of things, but also taking a lot of damage in the first point here. See if they're able to stay alive and keep things uh, keep things going here. But stacks slowly getting built up, getting thrown all the way to the back of the field here. It's looking a little bit rough, but Eternal Sovereigns the first to open up the goal and potentially put a point on the board. Barrier's going to get traded in return as Sovereign. Being able to find the crook leverage and sink it in. I'll be Eternal Sovereigns first up. Yeah. Nice goal there. 40 seconds in as opposed to deep into overtime as you've seen some first points go. Uh, so already off to a fairly quick game here. Uh, also, once again, this is a sort of duplicate, a mirror match or mirror in the bracket at least. Not uh, to the last one we saw. Dew Barrier is going down those. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, Sovereign not quite getting the angle there. Good hit stun as we go to the other side. One barrier going down. Flurry comes out, but it's not quite enough. Barrage is really good for getting forward. Sovereign gets crooked leverage into a strike down at the bottom and scores goal number two for Charles Um But as I was saying, this is a sort of mirror bracket to the last match we had. So whoever wins this one is going to qualify, and whoever loses is going to face the Flying Blobos in that tiebreaker for spot number seven. Uh, so similar high stakes, not the end of the line, but ooh, the double. Uh, goes behind for two barriers there, and Sovereign really just putting on... Ooh, a double on the other side, though, as I was talking about that. Yin and Yang finding a little bit of purchase in this set, trying to get things done. Eternal Arctic going forward, passing down to Sovereign, who puts it down to the bottom. That is a very quick 3-0 set there. Uh, the, it seems like the last two points are basically just as long as the first one there. So, really well played by the Eternal Sovereigns. Yin and Yang not quite finding their stride just yet, but seeming to build up a little bit of momentum as we went on. So, I'm looking forward to see how they progress through here, but that's Akai getting something like Orb Dancer, Rapid Fire, Prime Time, really good. Even deny a one-two punch, potentially, but uh, so many good options here. Looks like Orb Dancer going to get picked up first. We'll deny away the Rampage. Interestingly enough, Might of the Colossus is going to go over the Kazan, so they wanted to do the double deny to pincer the size away from the Rasmus and kind of punish uh, punish Greatest Meme for not picking Big Fish at the beginning. It's kind of a smart move, actually, because uh, you already have speed on your Kai, and if you, I guess, didn't, getting get, making the enemy Rasmus have no size is possibly more valuable than just picking up prime time there. So I, I sort of like that. We did get Orb Dancer over on Dragon Claude, and we did get Mad Rush on the guy that gets. So there still are some good picks, but that... Greatest meme is definitely, I think, going to be feeling this. I mean, that being said, they did just pick up a KO, so maybe it doesn't feel that bad. Yeah, Sovereign's the one feeling it so far there. Uh, guy that gets getting a sad boy's angle around the top there, but also a kill as well, kind of the redemption pair. You know, you don't take the barrier, but you do take the goalie as long as they can capitalize on this. It is kind of the power play chain there. Finally, Greatest meme finding the barrier. Strike shot passes it up to the guy that gets in the pendulum swing, is going to send it in there right as Alonzo is getting to the goalie box to defend it a tenth of a second later and that power play just dissolves without anything too much happening but just enough speed there just enough uh using that strike shot to pass it forward instead of waiting for it to come back really was a really good play by Dragon Claw there making sure that you keep the momentum up is so important in those power plays uh, and we see Yin and Yang finding their first goal finding a lot of kills here uh, and that really is the way that their comp works. Uh, they really need to get a lot of those KOs, and they're kind of immune to some of the sort of backblast from a KO comp. Getting a double is really nice there. Ricochet goes over Sovereign, gets one as sort of a consolation there. Uh, but fire, or I was going to say fire main, because we had a Kai midfield just last time. Uh, but that one is Eternal Arctic this time. 
uh, as we see very low off of the back of that play, but we're generating back up. So we kind of come to the end of all of that and we see Kai going off the edge as soon as I say something. Of course, Strike Shot gets it forward. The guy that gets not quite able to put through the greatest move is walking forward. The core flip misses the strike, unfortunately. We have a core flip from the Atlas Dragon Cloud going forward. It's a nice angle in, but Alonzo uses the core flip to send it right back. Primary kind of just going to get sent to empty space. Was using it as insurance just in case there was a fancy dribble that happened. Eternal Arctic using the branch to get it through. Sovereign gets it forward, uses the ultimate to try and get it there in the corner, tried to keep it there, but couldn't quite get it. The ensnare drums come out. Really good angle there. Pass up a Sovereign from Eternal Arctic. Really good. Sovereign sending it forward with the red cores. We are in overtime, of course, getting it up, getting it down with the core flip from Drag. And Grazebeam finally comes out. Countered by Stryker from Alonzo. Really nice. The secondary as well from Alonzo, but the primary. Not quite enough. They sent it to that bottom corner so many times. Alonzo had so many tools available. Thought he had one more, but just barely didn't get the angle. Yeah. And, well, Yin and Yang looking for a chance to come back now in the 2-0 comfort zone. Potentially get a decent, uh, decent draft on them. They're going to lose one barrier to start off, but... They'll be looking for some more. It's all good. They'll get one in return to keep things going. Bit of damage on the greatest meme, but the guy that gets looking to get the barrier will fall. Snare drum's coming out on the defense. Great Atlas ult from Dragon Claw. Will keep Julia alive for the time being. Eternal Arctic and Sovereign looking to make this push. Expanse is going to shut that one down, but Core Flips are coming online all around. Core Flip insta, insta flip dash punch, but it's going to get blocked away. As, uh, they'll keep it going. K.O. will come out from the greatest meme to start the power play. Corfo from Dragon Claw baits out Eternal Arctic's flip. And that's going to be a huge power play here for the side of Yin and Yang. A core flip coming out, but it's not going to be able to catch the guy that gets. Able to stuff it through. And that's going to be 3-0. Yin and Yang, they'll be taking a set now of their own and tying it up. Yeah. Another 3-0 sweep we have here from the other side. Yin and Yang picking that up. Uh, and also picking up Egoist on that Rasmus, also preventing the opponents from getting that all-important evasiveness from the extra energy you get from that one. Uh, team player on Mako, though, a match made in heaven, basically one of her best in slot ever since she came out. Uh, just really good with that passive, just red coring it even before overtime. Uh, we see, though, Fighter Flight on Juliet. I was talking about this a while ago on another one, but... Uh, Fighter Flight Juliet is really good. Getting the reset on the dash means that you can dash punch every 10 seconds instead of every 20 seconds, as long as you get the kill, of course. Uh, and of course, the extra speed never hurts either. So amazing pickup there. And I think Yin and Yang, despite team player on Mako, I think firmly winning this round of the draft. The perfect form on Atlas, not great, but also not the worst in the world either. Cooldown on Atlas is always nice, even if it comes at kind of perfect form, which is, you know, not as easy to proc with Atlas. I'm sure what I'm saying. The ult is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it's, it's good to have cooldowns there, nonetheless. You just hit a astral projection and get some get some CDR. It works for strikes as well, so um, it, it's pretty it's pretty nice to have some good awakenings all around, though. But yeah, I'm liking what Yin and Yang were able to pick up here. And we'll see the guy that gets got some energy going. They got to get this core away from Sovereign though, because Zon is making things a little bit tricky, keeping the core up. Eternal Arctic as well doing a good job in the midfield. In the core on Yin Yang side of the field. Now the guy that gets in a good position past the greatest meme, but the Crooks leverage. Sovereign looking for the breakaway. Strike shot will be able to save it, but gonna go for it again in the top side. Expanse to shut that down. Dragon Claw in a tight situation. He's gotta burn the flip. They'll find the KO. And that's that ad rush getting procced here. Core flip from Alonzo to try and keep it safe. I'm trying by a little bit of time right now. Desperately defending this last barrier. The greatest meme almost getting KO'd here, but looking to fight back. Still got hands. The barrage will not be enough to kill. Still has enough energy. Will evade. No scores happening just yet. Eternal Arctic looking to dime up Sovereign. Nice crook leverage and a bounce off the top will do it. Eternal Sovereigns will be first on the board in set three. Yeah. Finally, Eternal Sovereigns finding their momentum back after being on the back foot there. Yin and Yang. Uh -huh. Yin and Yang was really dominant there in that last set. And even at the beginning of this one. Uh, but the momentum is kind of swinging back and forth. We see... Uh, some of these longer first points, you know, we saw in the first set, really long first point, the other two a little bit slower. We had a little bit of friendly fire there, Alonzo hitting the black hole while Eternal Arctic was in it, and that's actually going to be a kill coming down, not quite, the dash punch not connecting, Eternal Arctic dodging out of the way. Sovereign has a little bit of prio here uh, with the speed from Mako, able to reposition a little bit. Eternal Arctic trying to get some position for this, for Sovereign on the Kazan, it's going to work out there using the ult to send it right through the greatest meme, and that's going to be another point coming out here. 
a uh, little bit faster than the last one, and that's kind of the pattern we saw in this set one. So Eternal Sovereigns might have just, you know, they lost their footing for a little bit in set two, happens, but they really are coming back strong here in set three, looking to, you know, take this very definitively. But of course, Yin and Yang not looking to go quietly. They have this adrenaline rush, uh, fight or flight Julie, who basically gets instant resets on Dash Punch whenever she gets the kill with it. Uh, so just really good stuff. Potentially two barriers going down. The flurry as well coming out into the strike. Not quite a goal, but very close to it. That's one barrier, though, going down to Sovereign. Doesn't quite get the double. Good defense by Dragonflot. But Eternal Arctic has to sprint back to try and catch up to the core, but it's not going to get it anyways. Sovereign red coring it. Primary as well from Alonzo. Not quite enough. We see the hook. Really nice from Greatest Beam. Has the core flip as well. Going to use it right there. The counter flip fails from Alonzo, but the barrage from Eternal Arctic is going to be enough. But the strike war from the side of yin and yang both the julie and the rasmus using the strikes perfectly timed there to just overcome all the strikes from eternal sovereigns beautiful team play there beautiful staggering of the cooldowns to not just waste them all at once and get countered by one ability and now the guy that gets on a bit of momentum right now has the flip and can be able to grab that second barrier as well quick open goal inside of eternal sovereigns so they're looking to make this Bush, try and tie it up to a point five. Greatest means got the max stacks to work with. Everyone does. Dragon Claw has the max orbs. Is able to move quite quickly on this Atlas. As we're seeing right there. But Sovereign doing some good core control, keeping the core up. Eternal Arctic as well. With the aerial speed is able to move quite quickly. A great Giga Blast going to get back over to Sovereign here. They're trying to force their way down onto this bottom barrier, but Greatest Mean falling back on the defense going to say no go to that one. Nice bounce off the black hole. Dash Punch not quite able to connect. Sovereign looking to make a play in return. Punishes that. And that's the second barrier down now. The Egoist just popped. Core flip burnt. Gets it right through the barrage. And that's Yin and Yang tying it up. Bringing it to set points. Point five. And a set each. They're keeping it neck and neck. Yeah, there's a great strike shot by Alonzo there to stop that first bit of aggression. But that core flip really quickly out. Not quite instant flip, but... Uh, greatest meme just launching that core flip as soon as possible. Caught Eternal Arctic off guard. Speed catching him off guard. Another dash punch from the guy that gets. Just getting all of these KOs. Now we have another time where Eternal Sovereign's on the back foot. They got reverse swept in the set here. That's two sets for Yin and Yang. Really making this kill comp work. And of course, they're the ones with the Atlas. So, you know, you can try and kill them back. You can try and KO and do some damage and stuff. But the Atlas is just going to put his ult down, laugh, it all, laugh away all the damage. And you know, get some reset with the perfect form off of it. Uh, you know, Catalyst going the way of the Rasmus as well is really nice. Has that Egoist from the last set as well, of course. So infinite energy basically on that Rasmus. Greatest Beam just going to be slinging core flips left and right. A uh, little bit of a hang on the draft there from Kazan seeing what may maybe they can work out there. Going to go for the hot shot in the end. A lot that you can do with that. Uh, you can get some fancy red core tech with Kazan with that hot shot. Uh, and of course, Orb Ponder ending up in Mako is pretty nice and the Chrono Boost on uh, Kai has definitely no slept either, so there are some notes here for Eternal Sovereigns, but I mean, getting that catalyst on the Ego is just so massive for Yin and Yang. Yeah, it's a really, really solid build. Um, you know, I mean, the only thing it's missing is that size, of course, but the greatest meme with the with the Ego's catalyst it has enough speed to kind of make up for it with the pancakes at this point that it's not, like, too, too painful. Uh, you know, you just need energy Exodia. Uh, and you'll get there. The guy that gets as well has an absolutely disgusting Juliet build, by the way. I mean, Ad Rush, Fight or Flight, Super Surge, Pancakes. This guy goes fast, the guy goes far, and this guy hits really, really hard. And there's that Egoist proc right there, in addition to the Ad Rush proc, the passing plays coming through. Yeah, and that barrier is not long for this world. This might just be a scoring play, and it is. The guy that gets able to get it and stuff it through, Yin and Yang, will be first up. Yeah, I mean, Yin and Yang just blitzing through the Eternal Sovereigns. I mean, Eternal Sovereigns, I thought they had in the bag after that first set. They were so dominant. But Yin and Yang just warming up after that. Great Giga from Eternal Arctic, but not perfect. Doesn't quite get the clear, just buys a second more time. Uh, one berry, though, does go down. That's going to be a kill onto the goalie. Alonzo losing the stacks on the stacks and stacks and on the Orb Ponder in one fell swoop. But that's a kill flip onto Julie. Uh, losing her own stacks on stacks there is really nice. The guy that gets has been slowed down there, uh, but no no other loss there. And speed on Julie, as good as it is, isn't critical to the kit. But that is two barriers going down, and Eternal Sovereign's looking to take some stuff, though. The power play dissolves. 
one barrier is still standing for Eternal Sovereigns, but now there's three teams, and that that's a negative power play for Eternal Sovereigns. Yin and Yang getting a kill, flipping the power play the other direction, and getting another kill onto the goalie with the core flip as well. The greatest being with that energy Exodia build, just going right through. Sovereign in good spirits with the little blobo heart there, but it is a tough uphill battle here for them. They can potentially look to reverse sweep it here, but it is going to be difficult. Yeah, they're in a bit of miracle mode at the moment, being on game point like this. Not really an answer for the guy that gets a nice evade, though. Eternal Arctic will stay alive for just a bit longer. But yeah, there's not a huge answer for the guy that gets. Being able to force it through Alonzo like that, um, things become really rough. If one KO comes out, I mean, the ad rush procs, and not only are you at the power play, but uh, both the forwards end up moving pretty fast, because usually Egoist is coming online at about that same time. And speaking of which... There's the speed boost, and Yin and Yang have the window to make a big play right here. They're going to push for the bottom barrier. It will fall down. Have two flips to work with as well, keeping it patient. Greatest Meme brings it to the bottom side. Not going to try and force it, though. Saving the flips for when they know that they can use it. Some good shot calling here. Keeping Eternal Sovereigns on a bit of the back foot. No. They do manage to get the one barrier so far, but neither team managing to get that second Good hold by the goalies. The Corfup is using the face, but the ensnare drums comes out, but it's not perfect. Actually ends up working against Alonzo there, and that's the goal scored by Yin and Yang, qualifying them for the second stage here of Launchpad. Eternal Sovereigns going to be going down to that tiebreaker. They're not out yet. They have that one last chance against the Flying Blobos, which we will see soon, but Yin and Yang, again, they look slow at first, it seemed that there were a lot of issues to work through, but then they just got their momentum. They hit their stride right at the end of that first set. We saw some notes of it. And then coming into that second set, they just blitz through the Eternal Sovereigns, and they just keep that up pretty well with some slight hiccups throughout the rest of this game, earning them a very deserved qualification spot here in this tournament. Uh, MVP of the Greatest Beam, getting that energy Exodia, just playing that midfield Rasmus really well, uh, and slinging so many core flips around really well done. Of course, getting that massive amount of goal participation. Uh, and Sovereign scoring five goals, all of the goals on the side of the Eternal Sovereigns. Really good forward play there. Uh, and, you know, Eternal Arctic playing really good midfield and Alonzo really good goalie. But the guy that gets seven KOs. And, I mean, the greatest memes, 18k damage. Not a slouch there either with three KOs himself. But just the KO comp triumphing in the end over Eternal Sovereigns is as good as they are at controlling the core, it can be really tough sometimes uh, to really to really just fight against that core control comp or against that kill comp, kill comp as a control comp. Yeah, for sure. The greatest meme put up a really good show. Guy that gets as well uh, with that Juliet build. The Egoist plus the um, ad rush on each of them individually. They were getting the procs almost simultaneously and it just became very overwhelming. But with that, we're going to be throwing it to a quick break. And when we come back, be our final match of the day. The third place tiebreaker, Flying Blobos versus Eternal Sovereigns. So we'll be 